Hello and welcome. I am Laura Cragen, an intuitive eating and Christian life coach. I am so glad you're here. This podcast is for women who knows her health is a spiritual matter. If you're anything like me, you have probably heard the phrase mind, body, and spirit. But what does that mean? I am confident that I have found the details of those three God-given areas in our life. Specific mindset skills for our mind, intuitive eating for our body, and healing in Christ for our spirit. My hope is that as we discuss these life-changing lessons, we will be better able to fulfill our unique purpose in preparing for the second coming of Christ. I am so excited to have these wonderful conversations with you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm excited to be here. It's been a little while. Summer is absolutely crazy, but we keep pushing through, right? (laughs) I have been to a funeral and to a family reunion in the past month, and so it's just go, 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 and now I'm glad to be at home for at least a full four weeks before I go on another trip with just my husband and I and be able to just have normal summertime. So it'll be great, and I want us to jump right in because today is challenge the food police. This is the fourth principle of intuitive eating, and you could probably guess what it means by me saying the food police. So it's that incessant dialogue we have in our head that dieting is create, created, um, those rules that should be obeyed over those years you've been dieting. And it plays out like a loud siren in your head when you eat those fluffy rolls at a work banquet or a ward party. Instead, reframe your negative judgmental thoughts. Like before, you said, I can't trust myself. I'm such a loser. I can never stay on a diet. I've just started it and I can't even stay on it. But now you're switching it to saying in your mind, I can trust myself. I can have one or two and be just fine. Start reframing that there. So I want to talk about right now about internal food voices that we have. So we carry with us a number of these different voices that direct and sometimes interfere with our intuitive signals. So we're going to talk about how there are, they're all inner food voices, but there are the destructive dieting voices, the bad group, and then the powerful ally voices. So let's start up with these bad voices we have in our mind. There are seven, all, seven of them all together, three of the bad and four of the good. So you honestly have more on your side than you think. And I thought this was just so cool once I got more into intuitive eating and it made sense how each voice and each statements that, that these go through in our mind, they actually are serving a purpose and they whether they're good or bad, and it's not just all bad or just all good. They some You'll see what I mean. So first, the food police, like I've been talking about. So they d- the food police decide whether you're being bad or good in relation to your food choices. It combines your dieting rules with your food rules. So after each time I describe one of these, I'm going to give an example. So with the food police, this would be a classic food police example in our mind thinking, I ate pizza last night, and I know I've gained five pounds from it. That right there is food police, okay? So second inner voice that we have that's destructive, or it can be, this is the thing, these, you'll see. (laughs) So the second one here is the nutrition informant, informant. It aligns with the pervading cultural myths about which foods are healthy, not fattening, or unhealthy, which is fattening foods. (laughs) So let me give you an example of which one the nutrition informant is. So this would be a classic example of that. If you eat that piece of cheese, you're going to get high cholesterol. (laughs) So can you just think of that in your mind? That's a different form of voice than it is to the food police. It really is trying, it is trying to help you in some ways, but it's kind of doing its black or white thinking. So you'll see where I'm going with this. Last negative destructive voice though that we have in our mind is the diet rebel. 
It makes rebellious comments that leave you feeling powerless in your ability to make autonomous decisions in your eating. So a classic example of a diet rebel is saying something like this. I'm going to eat all of these cookies, even though I'm not hungry and they're not really my favorite kind. See, it's a different voice. Each of these are different things and knowing these differences can help us combat what they are. For me, I kind of like details and going more into things like this. Um, But if it really does help you, just know that all of these voices are the diet culture food police in your mind. So let's go into our powerful ally voices. These can aid and comfort you in your relationship with food and your body. So the first one is the food anthropologist. So this food anthropologist in your mind is the neutral observer who makes comments without judgment. I really do like this one. So let me give you an example of that one. So here it is. This is what they'd be seeing in your mind. (laughs) I noticed that I was overly full all day yesterday. Like it's just a curious awareness. That's if those kinds of things come in your mind, no, it's actually an ally to you and it can be used for good. Okay, now let's go on to the next one. So the nurturer, it's a loving and kind voice that provides the most positive self-talk. So let's talk about that. Number, it's the fifth one. So he's the fifth guy. So the nurturer would say something like this. Even though I passed my fullness last night, it's all going to be okay. If you're having more of those thoughts, you're getting closer and closer to intuitive eating. All right? That's our fifth fifth uh, voice in our mind. The sixth one is our nutrition ally. He's also a good guy too. It's this neutral voice that helps you make decisions about foods that will give you energy and health and satiety along with satisfaction. So the nutrition ally would say things according to something like this. That food had a lot of garlic and onion in it, and I know that I get a stomach ache every time I eat those foods. Pretty simple, right? You observe and you know and it it bridges that gap between, okay, what's making me not feel good and what's the cause? And now I'm probably going to make a different choice for it next time. Perfect, huh? So so much great inner wisdom for our bodies and our minds are on this replay telling us these things, but it's over time that we've chosen to replay the negative voices. So last one, the intuitive eater is the voice that will come from your internal wisdom and will guide you to make the best choice for your body's needs. Ready? So here's what the intuitive eater would say. I can trust my body to tell me what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat. Beautiful. That's it. Those are those voices in your mind that are always on replay. Some are definitely playing more than others. And that's how we're trying to get you to have those four allies on your side. Let me repeat those again. It is the food anthropologist, the nurturer, the nutrition ally, and the intuitive eater. Now, the three bad ones I mentioned were the food police, the nutrition informant, and the diet rebel. All right? So let's talk more about how... There's another amazing phrase you can use and help you as you go through this because there's going to be bumps in the road. So what I like to talk about with my clients to challenge these food police is the phrase, for the most part. I love this phrase. So for the most part, this frame of mind helps you reframe your perfectionistic goals in in reasonable intentions. For example, after this talk, you may make a goal to always eat intuitively from now on. Instead, say I will regularly regularly stay mindful while eating 
and hope that for the most part, I will be an intuitive eater. Much better. It feels so much better to say like that. It's knowing that we're human, we're going to make some mistakes and not turning this into another rule book that we have to always be an intuitive eater now. This is my main goal. I'm going to do it. Blah, blah, blah. It's not what we're going to do from now on. So I also want to talk about basic CBT. So I'm kind of going a little bit off script here. But CBT is, if anybody's heard of it before, it's something you really should have memorized. It's so easy, and this is going to help you memorize it. It's very simple. I'm simple-minded. I like to think more like a child to help me remember because there's so much to remember in life. (laughs) So CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. Have you ever heard of the phrase cognitive distortions? This is where it comes from. It's basic therapy that people use when they go to see a therapist and even with yourself being your own ally, being your own coach, as I'm trying to help you, you are trying to help yourself listening to something like this, try to learn about what those cognitive distortions are in your mind. CBT will help. So you have these negative thoughts firing at you all day long. And how are you, like, like I was saying, how are you really going to have the time to go through a whole long life coach session in your mind after every single negative thought? Because it ain't no one got time for that. That's why these tools are brilliant. So introducing the fact machine. And I've talked about this before. But think of a fact machine. Fact. Like there's actual facts. Like thinking to yourself, I am fat. I am a horrible person. Is that a fact? No, there's no way to prove that. It is not even shown, and we are children of God. So we're going to put phrases through this um, analogy of a fact machine so hopefully come out on the other side with an actual real solid fact of life that is not going to bring us down. It's actually phrases that we're going to pump through our mind now thinking, this is right, this is actually truth, this is what... God wants me to believe in with myself because he believes in this with me. So it's a very fast and effective tool to use on the drop of a hat whenever you need. I I used it yesterday. Honestly, it's just, it's not even hard. You just, you'll see. So (laughs) let's see how the magic works. So let's say that you're feeling fat, like I was saying. So here's that phrase at one end of the machine. You're going to put it into the, the outlet where you're putting in the money or something, that little opening. And so there it is. I feel fat. Put it in. And as you now have that phrase going through that machine, which is your mind, you get curious and start to check the real facts. No, I don't feel fat. I feel uncomfortable. I feel unhappy. I feel less than. And it's just kind of bouncing around in that machine, like a pinball game. (laughs) You're bouncing around trying to kind of, Beat all the bad out of it and really undercover what's really there that's needing some help. You question it and lead it through the machine, like I said, because no, you don't feel fat. So there's there's something underneath that. It's only a mask of your true emotion. Fat isn't an emotion. (laughs) You will finally come out at the dispensary side of the machine and find that you actually feel insecure, ashamed, or not enough. So now you really got some real emotion to tackle with. As John Rohn says, he says, you have to name it to tame it. I always like to think of that. It's there's so much power in defining what the problem is so that you can move forward and actually tame it. But here's the unsexy part. So now that you know, I just feel insecure. That's it. I don't feel fat. I just feel insecure. You could even go deeper. I feel insecure. Why? Maybe because of how you grew up. I feel insecure because I stutter when I talk and that's how I am. I actually having a podcast has been a big challenge for me in the way I talk. It's been hard. I've had people make fun of the way I've talked before and it's difficult um, for someone like me, but making it a strength, turning our weaknesses into strengths. Um, But it really is going to take years. As I was saying, this is the unsexy part. It takes years to challenge those thoughts and to truly love yourself to really put every single phrase through that machine over and over again and that same one will come back again probably if I feel fat 
and you just keep putting it in there. It refines each time and you figure it out more and more and it finally comes out on the other side what the truth is. I actually feel lonely or I actually feel very tired and whatever it is and then you know what to do and go from there. So we change those neural pathways in our minds and to not think those things anymore and it is possible and it has been a miracle in my own life. So I wanted to share with you guys a personal story kind of revolves with challenging the food police and I'm going to be going along with just my own thoughts here. I'm not, not, I'm just kind of going off the cuff. So I knew I wanted to talk about this, but I haven't really prepared much of what I'd say. But this story came to my mind just a couple days ago. I was driving through a different area of town. And I passed by a Wendy's. And it's funny how... When you are in the throes of your eating disorder, or for just anyone listening that just has disordered eating, not necessarily a full-blown eating disorder like I did, you, you, you start to encounter situations or places or people or things or seasons and holidays that remind you of how things used to be once you finally have made that change to intuitive eating. And it's beautiful to think, wow, I am I'm so much better. I'm so glad I'm on this side. But this was one of those moments where I realized how bad it was and I passed by this Wendy's and I just had that double take like that's that Wendy's there was um there was one time where my husband and I went on a date and I don't even remember exactly what we were doing but definitely driving around this area and we were hungry and we wanted to keep, kind of keep in budget and get something cheap and back then though Wendy's was off my list Honestly, anywhere was off my list. I had like a handful of places I liked to go if I was going to eat out that were clean eating places, but they're honestly pretty expensive. But I, Brady, my husband, just told me, you know, let's let's eat here. And I said, yeah, that's probably the best. I'll try and get a salad or something. I don't know. So I remember going through that drive through line and I was having this panic attack and thinking, what am I going to eat? I feel like I'm letting him down. I can't choose what I want. I don't want to drag him somewhere else. He knows that it costs too much. He wants to get going on our date. And it became such a thing that I was so nervous how I was going to eat. I was so hungry, too. I was just beyond myself of hunger, too. I needed to eat. And I just would not let myself order something normal that I wanted and liked from there. And... It, it became, it, we had a big fight and we all, and we also just, and he also saw how much I was struggling too. So it was a fight plus he was trying to come for me, but it's a lot of things. I don't remember all the details, but that's what came up as I saw that Wendy's of, man, that was really hard having to go through that. Just trying to have a good time, actually a date. And there had to be that much hassle about where I go out for some fast food. And I think they didn't, I think they ran out of their side salad or something. So that kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back. And, um, it, it just made me, made me think how sick I was, but I never thought I was sick enough. And that's where I'd like to challenge you. You don't necessarily have to be sick in that way with the eating disorder, but just believe that maybe it is enough. You are distorted enough in your eating that you do need to make a drastic change. And, um, it's, it's very scary to make that change because you're going to be gaining weight maybe, um, in a different body, have to get used to being in a different body, maybe changing how other people around you also do things. Um, when you hang out with them, that's how my husband and I bonded is through dieting. But, And you just don't know how to navigate it. It's such a, it's intuitive. It's, it's not laid out. We're not used to that. When we have done diets, we're used to having someone just tell us what to do. We do it and hopefully it works out. And it never did. It's the, not the diet that you failed the diet. It's the diet failed you. So I wanted to share that with you just to help you paint a picture in your mind. Maybe if there are any instances that you have gone through with that same thing of, Being in a place where it should be normal, and I don't like to use the word should, but here it's to hopefully propel ourselves forward to make some change. 
because there's so much more life to live than knowing what the calories are or if there's mayo on that burger. And of course, if you want to do it for your good health, that's good too. There is still a way to do that with intuitive eating. But um, with the level of anxiety and depression that came with it and all these years I dealt with it, no one should have to go through that. And I put myself through that. And the food police, that's why I mentioned this here, it's the food police got me there. And I'd like to take that a step further. It's Satan. Satan is trying to tell us we are less than. We are bad when we eat that certain way. We are bad if we eat late at night. We are bad if we don't get in, in all our fruits or vegetables for the day. There's no such thing as putting those moral adjectives to ourselves that way. Our value is constant. God loves us no matter what, and it's always constant love in his book. So let me move on now to um, another story, actually, with me and thinking about the scriptures and um, me going through some harder times here in this last month with my depression. I've gone through kind of a second lull of hard of hardship with my depression. So with everything going on, I turned to the scriptures and uh, found an article also that helped me find this scripture and just this this concept of what we're going through is like the Jaredites and what they had to go through. And this is what it says. It's Ether 6, 8. And it came to pass that the wind had never ceased to blow upon and towards the promised land while they were upon the waters, and thus they were driven forth before the wind. And it, it's showing here that the wind is actually the very thing that's actually going to get us to the promised land. And um, with all that I've gone through this past month and went to a family reunion and there was a lot of drama that happened at the family reunion that was hard for me and, you know, having, um, trying to deal with different fluctuations of my hormones and, um, trying to navigate my cycle. I've had to change things with that and knowing that it's different for me now on. I have a harder time every time I have my cycle, um, compared to when I was, when a teenager, just having, trying to have kids and, um, my husband's been gone a lot, and there's just a lot going on with activities, and it's just very hard to keep up with all the things. And I've been having a hard time trying to, I've been trying to just keep up on my own mental game through all this. And I was also adding on a new drug to my routine, and that caused me to just counter, it caused it to just to counteract a lot of the antidepressant qualities of what I was go- dealing with with my medication that was helping me so definitely a second lull of hardship here and um not really finding much reprieve and having my own demons come come to me at night and and my thoughts and just wanting to not uh not really exist in some ways and so I've had to really be careful but I still press forward and it's not who I am but this is a scripture as I felt drawn like spiritual nourishment to come to Christ and to come to God he gives me that that life as food and water does and like I talk with intuitive eating this isn't just about intuitive eating it's about fighting that nourishment in God and in Christ they are our first and forever caretakers of our our souls and this was a great blessing to me to hear this and have confidence knowing that these are actually things that are bringing me to a better place there is hope. There is a better spot. And I've even felt it today. Things have gotten better today. And my husband is home. He made it safely. Um, I'm recording this podcast. I'm actually getting some work done. So it feels really good to know, okay, it's going to be okay. I had that breath of kind of an intake breath of air after you're in, drowning in the water for a while and kids, it's just busy. So I'm just so grateful. And I have to give you that my testimony of that um and hope you know that that is because of Christ he has felt it it's hard for me to also think though because he's never been he's never had a family he never know what 
intuitive eating felt life felt like or having the eating disorders and um dealing with depression maybe he did I don't know that's the point is just choosing to believe because we don't comprehend everything God does and it was real and he did experience it all for us and um I just hope that helps anyone that's listening whoever needs to hear that I just kind of went off there had to be real but if you have been listening to these podcasts for a while, I invite you to please come and have an intuitive eating breakthrough session with me. What's, what are you waiting for? Come and talk with me. It's free. There's no pressure. And just as a fellow woman in this faith that truly understands that inner turmoil, and I'm a certified health and life coach, and I've been going through this for a little bit, I can safely say there is hope, and there is a way to break free. There's there's hope (laughs) it's beautiful and with this intuitive eating breakthrough session I can help and our master healer the principles of the intuitive eating and eternal gospel doctrines that we know in this wonderful church it's there is a way so it's only 16 minutes just to talk for an hour and it has a ton of value and I guarantee you will leave with a clear vision how to have a healthy and better relationship with yourself and your food and whatever it is I need to coach you through I kind of try to feel it out what it is that's really going on they're pretty powerful so there's no pressure on the call and I'm here to help you but a link to that in the schedule below and it's in the show, show notes so look there and I am very glad you listened today and hope it was helpful for you but you take care push through the summertime is supposed to be fun but sometimes I think of that song summertime sadness <laughs> I just think yeah there's actually a lot of things that go on a lot of stuff you know family drama huh. anyway but let me leave on a positive note here and help you know that you are loved and there is hope in Christ knows what you're going through so you have a great day my friend Thank you for listening, and I hope today's show filled your soul and gave you the direction you were searching for in your health, life, and relationship with God. I would love to stay connected. Subscribe to my podcast so that you can be the first to know when new episodes go live. And it would mean so much to me if you would rate and review this podcast just down below. Your words inspire me and give me that boost to create more inspiring content to share. I would love to meet you on social media. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. Also, if this show really inspired you today, take a screenshot to share it on social media and tag me or click the share button to give it to someone else that would also benefit from these spirit-filled discussions. Let us all spread the good word of the gospel of Christ and help others in any way we can. Thank you again for listening today, and I look forward to connecting with you.